All right, and we return. Nicole's about to spill the beans on what really went down. Three days ago, I was covering an event at the Zengfa Embassy. Then some of the president's men called me over. They said if I cooperated, I'd get an exclusive interview with the president. And the gun in the trash? I really don't know. All I was told was to come wearing a red hood and aim the laser pointer. I never thought it would snowball into all of this. I'm really, truly sorry. So what it sounds like is that they planted the planes in the gun to make it seem like there was a shooter, had her point the laser pointer, so that he was you know, never in any actually danger, per se. Uh, Knightley was to shoot the balloon to make it seem like a gun had been shot. And... Somehow, Rook was also shot, I'm assuming by Knightley, accidentally. I uh, don't know how the killer fits into all of it. He was probably hired to kill him and was planning on it, but, uh, you know, as with both the previous attempt and this attempt, uh, he. It was less than successful due to extenuating circumstances. Anyways. Nicole, thank you. That was a testimony worthy of the courtroom. This is sufficient testimony to verify the fake assassination plot. Damn you, the lot of you. You're all a bunch of mindless morons. It's a shame. If only you had been able to usurp the investigation as planned. You would have been able to silence this young lady. <laughs> Cutting it a little close there, Nightly. Blast! So tomorrow's headlines now read... Okay. I'm, I'm worried that about Kay's voice. The first first episode has gone up, but Kay hasn't shown up. All the feedback I've gotten is this, this is someone's favorite game in the entire series, which... I confess, if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be the first Miles Edgeworth game, so this one might trump it. I don't know. Fake, assass <laughs> Fake assassination plan exposed. Becomes a murder. Right? I can't believe you do something that whole this horrible, pal. I I admit nothing. <laughs> yeah, this guy kind of. I don't want to say deflated because I'm pretty sure he still has the same amount of body mass. But uh, we we learned a little something about our vicious, manly, buff president. Yeah, you that's enough. We have no choice but to admit it. No. So, Mr. President, you admit that you planned a fake assassination? Yes, I admit it. Yeah, I'm sorry. But why? Why did you have to do this? My approval rating in Zen 5 fallen. Yeah, I wanted to appeal to them as a strong president who survived the assassination. But in the end, it was just a lie. A stupid lie. Go. And the bullets in the bulletproof vest? Prepared earlier. It was not fired today. Figured as much. But what about to kill her? We had seen our plan was leaked. Someone wanted to make the swing fascination real. Yeah, that's why the killer wore the red raincoat. He would impersonate the culprit from the plan in order to approach the president. Huh. So the fact that it's an inside job might still be a thing. But there's still one thing I don't understand. And what's that? Why did Rook die? His death was not a part of this charade. And yet it really happened. Yes, why was his life taken? I assumed it was a mistake, because uh, Knightley can't turn right. He just kind of fired to the right and accidentally hit Rook. Ethan was an outstanding bodyguard. Even though he wasn't from my country, he had my utmost trust. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't think having the trust of a cowardly president meant that much, honestly. <laughs> wow. Fucking sass it up, Kay. Seriously. God, I'm... Kaida... Kaida has the natural sass in her voice that would make that character work. I would take Kaida or Noki for it. Just because 
they can do female voices and I can't. Why can they do female voices? They're female. Hmm. Also, I'm drinking water. I want to make that clear. It's water. This isn't Crystal City. I'm only drinking water. Hey, that's the same... <laughs> hmm. That's the same sort of bond me and Mr. Edgeworth, pal. That's the same sort of bond between me and Mr. Edgeworth, pal. His... Gumshoes is probably the hardest voice to get, keep doing consistently. It's like sometimes I get it, and other times I just feel I'm way off. I wouldn't put it that way. Did Rook know of your plan? Not the exact details. They asked him to cooperate, but he refused. You should have listened to his advice. Yes, indeed. I would have done all this if I had known. <laughs> if I had known is not a great excuse. Wouldn't hold up in a court of law, which, interestingly enough, is sort of the environment here. <laughs> You're being too dramatic. A man died. What? Rook was just one piece of the president's defense. Baby. Bitch. It's not as if he cooperated with your plan. I did. He ran away, taking whatever dignity he had left with him. Good riddance. He's dead. He didn't run away. You yeah, know you're a valuable bodyguard, but still. I don't have time for this, sir. I'm the team leader now. There's gonna be a lot of changes now that that chicken's gone. After all, adaptation's the most important principle in chess. Is it? Pretty sure it's thinking ahead. I knew you always wanted to be a team leader. B but isn't this a bit imprudent? <laughs> I will orchestrate even more perfect plans just like this one. What about this is perfect? Because... From your perspective, nothing has gone right. You definitely have ambition. But wasn't your perfect plan today a failure? If it weren't for you and your that idiot rook, it would have been perfect. You know, again, if it weren't for you, doesn't justify it's perfect otherwise. Oh yeah, fucking... Mm, let me think of a famous historical setting. Oh, yeah, the uh, British attempt to take back the American colonies. It was perfect except for that Washington and Thomas Jefferson fellow. Except for those guys, it was a perfect plan. Went down flawlessly. That makes sense. <sighs> what did Rook do? If he hadn't died, the killer wouldn't have threatened me. And you would have never set foot in this plane. Nightly, how can you say such a thing? Yeah, he died trying to save you, Mr. President. Maybe he fulfilled his lifelong ambition. He died protecting the President? Huh? But the assassination was fake, right? Of course it was, but you need to listen closer, little girl. Remember the guy who wanted to make the fake assassination real? There were two gunshots at the time of the incident. The first was, as you said, I shot the balloon. But the second one wasn't me. So who fired the second shot? Might have been to kill her. The real assassin. But it wasn't to kill her. That guy <laughs> keeps getting off of the murder charge. <laughs> he intended to attack the president with a knife, not a gun. Gee, that's bold. Alright, if he knew the president was that out of shape, maybe, but still, with bodyguards and witnesses and cops, like, come on, man. The lucky winner was a hidden queen. Or should I say, the lady in the coat over there. What? Are you still gonna try and accuse her? Nice spiky hair and... Why does she have a bear trap? You're accusing Nicole Powell. I ain't no assassin. Really? I don't believe you. The gun that was left in the trash, that was yours, right? Really? Nightly's testimony. I shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the President. Rook waited in the cabin while I led the President to the security room. When I came out, Rook was already on the ground. The bullet that the lady fired must have hit him while we were escorting him to the... While we were escorted the President to the plane, the shot was fired from the gun he found in the trash. Was it? I don't know if it was. 
So you're saying you don't know exactly when the victim was shot? Maybe's job isn't to protect Rook. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. It's to protect the king. I think that's every piece's job. But... Huh? The fuck? What he's trying to say is that his job was to protect the president only. It's over if you lose the king. Checkmate. That's the first rule of chess. Rooks are way more valuable than knights, jackass. If you let your pieces get taken right in front of you, you're not likely to win. But I did win. Look, the president is safe. I had to sacrifice a rook. I'd rather sacrifice a knight. Don't claim victory when the game has only just begun. Chess puns. Rebuttal. All right. Shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the President. Now I want to look at this gun we found. Two shots have been fired. Hmm. That is a bit of a contradiction. I would have hoped zero shots have been fired. It's been a while since I played this. Anyways, uh, press him on everything. So the victim had no part in your plan. Yeah, that's right. He didn't even know it was all fake. Really should let the guy know. So you're saying that the that it was a real assassination. He thought it was a real assassination attempt. But you fired the gun right next to him. Wouldn't he have noticed? Maybe he did. Not that it matters now. Besides, even if he thought the assassination attempt was fake, his duty was to protect the king. He made a split-second decision and to sacrifice himself. Victim was truly a man of honor. You're wrong. It was all part of my plan. He simply assisted in our little performance on stage. How do you not let the main guy in charge of everything know about this? Hold it. Seriously. Why did you do that? The assassination was supposed to be fake. There were a lot of guests milling around outside. Wouldn't it be bad if the president who just escaped an assassination? was seen lounging around drinking grape juice. Imagine that... Really? This is a fan translation. We're still pulling that shit. Drinking wine? Imagine the headlines. What was the victim doing at the time? How should I know? I was with the president in science security room. Anyway. Yeah, the Phoenix Wright games have always, like, refused to acknowledge the existence of alcohol in any meaningful sense. With... I think one exception being the most recent game, Spirit of Justice, in which there's clearly a guy who's plastered, and they reference the bit in Apollo Justice where Chersey sneaks in, quote, grape juice to Phoenix Wright, and Athena points out it was probably the fermented kind of grape juice. So, yeah, even in the fan translations, they can't get rid of grape juice, huh? It's like... And that's the thing, I think I heard in Japan, it's still grape juice, but it's so clearly wine. Like, come on now. I should get some grape juice. I like grape juice. Both white and red. Well, yeah, I do. White and red. I prefer white grape juice. Cranberry juice. That's got, like, a certain punch to it that I like. Anyways. And I do mean grape juice. I don't mean wine. When did you find the body? About where he is now, he collapsed in the middle of this room. When I returned, the door to the plane was already closed. A bullet must hit Rook right before the door closed. Talk about a hassle. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I just woke up. It's all his fault that this plan failed. Bailey, that's too far. Even if he protected the king, he couldn't protect his honor. He was careless in his duty, and he paid the price for it. This man is truly despicable. As I was saying... I need to make it more obvious that I'm the guy who clearly tried to kill him. Hold it. Weren't you both carrying bulletproof attaché cases? Yeah, when Rook noticed the laser pointer. We opened up those bad boys and became the President's shield. You're telling me the bullets slipped through a space between your shields? Are you claiming that Miss Swift had such precise aim? Well, she was targeting the president. I wouldn't say her aim is precise at all. So the bullet was off target and just happened to hit the victim instead. Through the tiny gap between his bulletproof vest and case. 
I don't want to believe it either, but they say the truth is stranger than fiction. I think fiction is stranger than truth, honestly. You get some weird bouts of truth, but overall, you can pretty much have anything in fiction. Brooklyn, fucking Crystal Cities is fiction, alright? I have yet to encounter truths certainly more annoying than that. Stranger, maybe, eh? It's pretty fucked up. Anyways, Rook was hit by a one in a million shot, and you have the evidence to prove it. Do I? Shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. So the second shot wasn't part of your plan. That's right. She did that on her own. If you think about it, it wasn't. She wasn't desperate. Wasn't she desperate for a scoop? I'm a journalist. I ain't no murderer. Well then, who was the one who joined? Who was the one who joined the play in order to get exclusive coverage? Uh, that's. It's just like you said. I orchestrated this fake assassination attempt. She was only supposed to aim the laser pointer. I guess it wasn't enough for her. She prepared her own gun and took aim at the president. She probably thought she wouldn't get caught if she went on and shot me too. Knightley fired the first shot, then Miss Swift fired the second one. In other words, Nicole also had a gun. I never thought she was the type. Without any proof, it's just pure speculation. Then bam, let's present some evidence. Alright, I'm leaning towards the last statement. God, can I say how nice it is in the... I think it's the t more, two more recent games, uh, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, where they have little dots to show where you are on the statements. Hell, that might be most games, but not this one for whatever reason. Anyway, I would think it's the gun that says it was fired twice. Same model as the victims. Yeah, how would she also even get the gun? Except from you guys. Uh... Yeah. From what I remember of the first uh, Edgeworth game, it was pretty logical. There were a few leaps towards the end, but nothing compared to some of the Phoenix Wright cases. And there were a couple leaps in... Uh, I just beat Spirit of Justice a couple days ago. Uh, finally got around to it. There were some leaps at the end that I only knew to present the evidence because we hadn't really used it yet the connections they made were a bit much. Eh, but hey. I beat the game. Yeah. Hmm. Good, good ending, I think. Good continuation of Apollo's story. They made the right choice there. So you shot the balloon and Miss Swift shot Rook? Is that really true? I can't see it any other way. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. The number of gunshots doesn't turn up. <laughs> All right, now it does. <laughs> Why don't the gunshots turn up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence left behind by the real criminal. Fake evidence? Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we'd assume that the assassin was in the audience. In order to make us believe that, the gun was used by the assassin. The gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. I get it, because two shots were fired during the incident. However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Yeah, therefore, whoever set this up knew that there would be two shots. And therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's life. Hehe, <laughs> here it comes. You're packing some serious heat. Enough with the song and dance. You've come this far. Go ahead and say it. I won't just say it, I'll prove it. One who really shot Rook is... Uh, I'm assuming Knightley. It's possible it's to kill her, but we, they went on and said, you know, ah, knife. So... Based on this... It's just... It's all, it can only be Knightley. Yeah. Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. Heh. <laughs> He finally said it. Maybe you could pair. The killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim he was a victim of the assassination. Once the president had entered the security room door and the plane was closed, only the victim and Knightley would have been left in this room. At that moment, you fired a bullet directly at Rook. Objection! That's not your voice. A third bullet. Heh. <laughs> Only two gunshots were hurt. Your numbers don't add up. 
The plane's walls are soundproof. I know that somehow. If the door was closed, a gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? That's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? Yeah, I didn't hear any gunshots. But weren't you watching this room through security cameras? The cameras in this room are usually turned on. Yeah, I turned on the power after entering the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No, actually, yeah. What is it? He's not being clear. Mr. President, focus, this is vital. Yeah, there was Betty's way. Please! Yeah, I was hiding under the bed, covering my ears. Well. What? But you knew the assassination was fake! It doesn't matter. I simply hate the sound of guns. That terrifying sound, I just can't help it. Well then. Yeah, even Gumshoe's like, I'm better than this guy. That definitely ain't going in my article. Really? That's a scoop and a half right there. <coughs> Nightling, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Eh, uh, well, yeah. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the monitors. In that moment, when the president wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Maybe. Did you really? You deceived me. You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Dude, you're one to talk. Have a little faith in the man in me. The bodyguard is risking his life to protect you. I want to believe you. I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. The gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets makes that clear. Maybe it was one short to begin with. Everything of that. What? That is a stupid thought, now that you mention it. Maybe she already fired a shot yesterday or the day before. That second shot was fired today. The only one that hit Rook. Well, isn't this just the perfect excuse? Yeah, I might try and find a different voice for him. I'm clearly channeling Far From Subtle with him. Excuse? The possibility exists. You can't deny that. He's right. I can't deny it completely. Mm, decisive evidence. Evidence so decisive it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? Gah. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything? I can in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vlad. Talk to you later. Shoot me go shave. See you around, Asklands. Check out my Patreon if you can. Every little bit helps.